All right. Uh, hi, everybody. And um, thank you, Diana. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and pull the slides up. Um, so yeah, we've got a really fun session today. Um, Amir and I are going to walk through, uh, you know, a couple of different things just to go through the agenda really quickly again. Um, you know, so we just did our intro. Amir is going to, or we're going to provide a high-level overview of our integration just between UiPath and Alteryx, and then Amir, my counterpart at Alteryx, is going to provide a platform overview of you know, both Alteryx Designer and Alteryx Server, as well as the UiPath connector and sort of how it fits within that. Um, following that, I'm going to give a live walkthrough of actually, you know, configuring Alteryx, the activity pack within UiPath Studio, and then also, you know, a brief overview of connecting uh, the UiPath connector within Alteryx Designer, just, you know, to show sort of those two directions. Uh, and we're going to do a fun live demo uh, to build at least one automation and, you know, time willing, maybe a second. Uh, then we'll walk through a couple of use cases and we'll provide plenty of time at the end for Q&A. Um, I think we've got... Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, just a little message from Diana. And let me um, try to get this off screen and let's jump into it. Um, so actually, Amir, if you want to start with a little bit of overview. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. Again, Amir Khan, happy to cover all tricks today and, and talk through um, all the integrations that we have. If you have questions, again, put them in the chat. Happy to answer those at the, at the end of the session. Um, but when we're thinking about the Alteryx APA platform, right, analytics process automation, and as it merges with robotic process automation, right, with UiPath, what we're really looking at are a couple of key areas. And here's just some examples, right, in terms of the value that you can recognize when you start to um, run the uh, different automations that you're actually trying to do. Um, we see this across all different lines of businesses, verticals, depending on where you are, data is data. And at the end of the day, getting the most value out of that data is really what we're all striving for uh, and doing that in the most efficient way possible. So the most common ROI that you may see is going to be around the time savings, right? And you see that with UiPath alone. Now, imagine taking all of the automations that you have and pushing that into an analytic framework where not only do you have the clicks and the, the reduction of errors, right, that you have in the benefits of the RPA, but now you can apply powerful analytic models uh, at the user level, right? And this could be in a code-free, code-friendly way. So for those of you who do have the chops to sit there and write your own Python models and things of that nature, you have the capability to do that in the Alteryx platform and integrate that into your UiPath workflows as well. So efficiency, time savings, those are the two big things that you're going to see that RPA and APA bring to the table. Next slide. So what does that look like in practice? When we think about the nature of the Alteryx platform and how data agnostic it is, we'll showcase a little bit of that here as we go through a platform overview. But effectively, you have the ability to connect to data pretty much anywhere it lives, right? There's 80 plus connectors dedicated inside of Alteryx, many more inside of UiPath, not to mention the different API integrations and other ways that you can start to connect to your data. But leveraging APA and RPA together, you can not only automate the access of the data, you can automate the prep and blend and all of the things that you're seeing in the middle of your screen right now in a low code, no code environment. So these automation building blocks inside of Alteryx allow you to take advantage of spatial insights. So if you have geographic plots that needed to be um, rendered and visualized, you have that capability now that you can tack on into your UiPath automations. Predictive and prescriptive analytics or data science and ML, right? any buzzword you want to throw out there, that, that's kind of the flavor of the week. You have all of these capabilities now within a singular platform and the integrations just make that much more powerful. I'll go to the next slide. Now, when we're thinking about where you can insert an APA process or an Alteryx workflow inside of your automations, it really is the path of least resistance, right? That's the answer to how you start to use both platforms together in a way that makes meaningful sense. You can integrate your RPA bot inside of an Alteryx workflow in the middle. So for example, you have all the data prep and blend and access done through Alteryx. Let's say you have this data that's ready to go. You can leverage 
your processes and automations from that point, and then even feed results back into an Alteryx workflow if you need that to continue on versus just end there. We also have tons of integrations where you have a bot at the beginning, an Alteryx workflow in the middle that you're calling from Studio um, that lives in Alteryx server, and Mo will show a little bit of that later, and then continue on and maybe it kicks off another process at the end. Or maybe you just execute a workflow from your automation altogether, and it doesn't even have to have a lot of those pre and post um, level transformations inside of your workflow. It, it's really up to you and your creativity is really the limit here. Next slide. So we have similar deployment methodologies in our platforms, right? When we're thinking about UiPath Studio, Studio X, or UiPath Orchestrator, the equivalent of that on the Alteryx side is really Alteryx Designer and Alteryx Server. So essentially Designer, again, that developmental layer where you're designing your automations and your workflows, and then publishing those up into a server or a gallery environment for consumption by end users. And that really allows for mass scale across your organization. The benefit of having that server component, as I'm sure you're all aware, is that you open up your work to the entire organization. You have the ability then to schedule your workflows to run, so full end-to-end -end automation at that point, as well as version control. So if you have different environments that you're developing, as well as governance and security. So if you're trying to make sure that data doesn't get muddied and folks aren't getting access to things that they shouldn't have access to, all of that scalable solution, all those scalable solutions come from the Alteryx server environment. So really it's one platform, right? Server and designer allow you to do a lot of those elements that uh, we're gonna be discussing today. Next slide. Oh, perfect. All right, so go ahead, Mo. Uh, sure, so uh, Diana, we can come right back uh, to the slide or, or to the quiz after a couple of slides, but yeah, just to recap a little bit, um, you know, I, I did just want to call out sort of, you know, with our bi-directional integration with Alteryx, the two components again. So we do have the UiPath connector uh, for Alteryx designer. So that's actually, as you're designing within Alteryx's IDE tool, you know, the equivalent of Studio for Alteryx, uh, you can just drag in, and I'll show this live in just a few minutes, but you can just drag in um, a connector for UiPath, uh, connect to an on-premises orchestrator, and then basically, uh, you know, point to a process, feed it input parameters and things like that, take its outputs and really just integrate that into your Alteryx workflow. And then on the other side, if you're beginning in studio with the UiPath automation, uh, we can reference a Alteryx server job. We can start a job, we can pull data from it. We can use that within our workflow. And it just creates a really powerful bi-directional connection where you know, for a little bit of, you know, I know our audience here, you know, we probably have people at different stages where we might have Alteryx users who don't have UiPath. We might have UiPath users without Alteryx. I think there's a lot of value to add RPA and UiPath automation to Alteryx basically, you know, with, with a lot of what Amir talked about, you know, really just sort of extending a little bit of the reach of Alteryx with, you know, to incorporate legacy data sources, you know, maybe mainframes, terminals, uh, you know, maybe unstructured or semi-structured documents on the ingest side, but then also adding execution on the back end. So, you know, once I've got my insights, once I've got my output from Alteryx, it might be a report, it might be analysis, I can act on that with UiPath. And then similarly, if I've got UiPath, if I've got lots of data, Alteryx provides a lot of great, you know, very powerful data capabilities around data wrangling, data blending, adding artificial intelligence and a lot of built-in models. Uh, and just a lot of analytics, um, you know, type capabilities that I can incorporate into my UiPath workflows and vice versa. And if you've got both, you know, we hope that today's session, we're going to go through a lot of the basics, but we hope today's session gives you, you know, a few ideas on if I've got both of them, how to use some of them and some of the, you know, are the possible with, uh, with both tools together. Um, so before getting into a little bit more detail, Diana, I think this is a great time to have a um, quick break for the quiz. What do you think? Sure. So we're going to have some fun now. Um, I just put the Mente code. Um, if you go to Mente and then the code, um, add that into your phones. I will share my screen. and wait for a minute for people to join. 
Hey, we got a lot of people today. Let's see uh, how many join the quiz. Yeah, we have a great prize. This is great. I'm going to give it a few more minutes. Okay, great. So let's get started. There's still more people joining. So if you answer fast, you get more points. Uh, I think we might have the uh, the wrong quiz here, uh, Dana. Okay, let me uh, stop sharing and double check again. Unless we have any workday experts here, because that was actually a pretty hard question. Oops. It's still from tech integration series, just a different session. Yep. Okay, it's the second presentation in uh, many presentations. Do you want me to share it, Diana? Um, yeah, I've got it now. Sorry about that. You got it? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, the code has changed, you guys. So if you can uh, type in. I, I will share the code. Okay, great. Let's see. I will put it now in. Now. Okay, so this is the new code, 25075535. The link is the same, www.menti.com. And you can go from desktop or mobile. It's a bit easier if you go from mobile. And there will be a new quiz room soon. So Nana, you can share now. Okay. And share in present mode from slide uh, one. There we go. Okay, great. So we'll get started. In what directions can UiPath and Alteryx communicate? Well, most people got that right. Both Alteryx to UiPath and UiPath to Alteryx. Great. So let's see who's leading our leaderboard. Wow, everybody was pretty fast there. Really fast. Chris, it looks like you're in the lead with Joe following fast soon behind you. Okay, I'm going to do one more question. I need to answer fast. What are the UiPath and Alteryx management tools? UiPath Orchestrator and Alteryx Server, UiPath Orchestrator and Alteryx Designer, or UiPath Studio and Alteryx Server? Time is up. Oh, we got a variety of answers there, but most people got UiPath Orchestrator and Alteryx Server. Great. Let, let's see the second leaderboard. Nice. We have a switch now. Yeah. Matt. Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Yeah, okay, so we'll come back to this with the rest of the questions at the end of the session. 
All right, great. Uh, I will go back to uh, the slide deck. I like the Game of Thrones reference there, by the way, uh, for Bran. But um, yeah, so a little bit more recap. And then, yeah, we really wanted to jump into a lot of live walkthroughs today. So we're going to do that in just a second. But, you know, just a little bit more at a high level on, you know, sort of the value that we've seen with customers, you know, across different personas, you know, with Alteryx plus UiPath. You know, I think UiPath really helps you know, gather that challenging data. Um, I think Alteryx is fantastic at, you know, the data wrangling side, the data consolidation and structuring side. So by adding UiPath, you can really augment that slightly to incorporate some additional, uh, you know, sources that you may not have reached into right now. Again, that could be documents, uh, that could be legacy applications, that could be websites that change often, really all the things you can do with UI automation, with some of our integrations and some of our other capabilities like AI computer vision. Um, and then from a structuring and consolidating perspective, you know, as part of your UiPath workflow, we can put data in a standardized format, standardized structure. You know, we can store it directly within a database or data store that Alteryx is already connected to. So it's very easy to set up sort of, you know, that initial data pipeline or that initial data ingest where, you know, we do some of it from, you know, whether it's the documents or the legacy applications, and then automatically kick off Alteryx or Alteryx is already waiting for the data from that source. And, you know, as we're talking through it today, I think the biggest theme from a UiPath perspective that I really want to get across is sort of the value of being able to take action on insights and analytics. So I think Alteryx creates phenomenal, um, you know, outputs in terms of reports and analysis and decisions. And if we take those and we actually act on them, that could be something like, you know, in a cybersecurity example, it could be, you know, taking action on powering down VMs or doing something to mitigate a, a, a threat. And then if it's a data cleanup effort, a data joining effort, uh, you know, we can do some type of validation or some type of post-processing there. And we'll show a couple of examples that I think are gonna help this, you know, sort of, uh, you know, look a little bit more tangible, but in general, uh, that data ingest on the front end and that uh, data execution or that sort of execution by a robots on the back end is, are, you know, are sort of the two uh, patterns that we see the most often. Uh, and then UiPath does offer, uh, you know, great integration with a lot of different line of business systems with or without APIs, you know, plus all those legacy applications and all of that. But, you know, as we're talking through Alteryx Designer and Studio, um, Alteryx Server and UiPath Orchestrator, I think the main value is, you know, we can set up workflows within UiPath or Alteryx, have them talk to each other, and you have a lot of creative freedom in terms of where you start, what a user does, what actions trigger a process, and then what actions within a workflow can trigger the other platform and vice versa. So again, we'll show a lot of, uh, you know, at least structural examples of that, and we'll, we're, we're glad to take a lot of questions and answers at the end on, you know, maybe some practical use, use cases uh, the audience has. So um, before we get into a live walkthrough, I'll just show a little bit of, you know, context on what we're going to talk through. So what you see here is UiPath Orchestrator with UiPath Workflows. And then those workflows can be tied into Alteryx Designer just by, you know, dragging spleen that Amir is about the show. Uh, and then once that's done as part of my Alteryx workflow, I can then kick off the UiPath, uh, the, the, you know, the corresponding UiPath workflow that I pulled in and get the output results. Um, so I'll actually uh, stop sharing for a second. Amir, do you want to pull it up live and just walk through Alteryx Designer, Server, and the UiPath Connector real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so I'm going to start us off in Alteryx Designer. Can I get a thumbs up that that screen's coming through okay? Yep, you're good. Awesome. All right, fantastic. So inside of Alteryx Designer, right, this is, again, that developmental layer where you can start to design your automations, your processes, your workflows, convert existing processes to automate them, et cetera. You're going to be greeted with this particular screen, right? Your start here page. You're going to see tons of resources on the right, maybe some examples here in the middle that you can start to get your feet wet with very, very quickly. Uh, I will call out just really quickly. You also have an Alteryx Academy. So if you do want to learn more, uh, our community page, again, best in class, you can go there. It's very similar to UiPaths and that you have tons of resources, trainings, help, all kinds of different things available. 
300,000 plus users on there. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a great way for you to just get your feet wet and learn a little bit more after today's session. Um, really quickly, just giving you an overview of what it is that you're looking at. Across the top, we have our palette. The palette's going to provide you with, again, the categorized, color coordinated, and shaped similarly reporting tools uh, or, or automation tools, if you will. And each one of these is, again, geared towards the end user in mind. So whether it's that more advanced power user or perhaps one that just leveling up, never seen Alteryx before, most of the functions that you see here are going to have a dedicated example available with them. And again, the interface is drag and drop. So I can drag them into the Canvas area, configure the functions of those tools on the left-hand side of my window in the config window. And then as I run this workflow, my results will be populated here down below. So if we take a look at a workflow that's built here, what you'll be able to see is that we've built an automation here that is taking advantage of both Alteryx and UiPath. Accessibility to data, again, as we referred to earlier, is really one of the hallmarks of Alteryx. So you have the ability to connect to data where it lives without really a lot of uh, mess in the middle. You know, so it gives you that capability. Seamlessly connecting, again, with the UiPath connector, and we'll talk through some of the configurations here in a bit as well, but applying a predictive model, right? Getting more advanced analytics out of your data that may not be the, uh, the easiest thing to do right now, or perhaps you're running separate models and different platforms. We'll talk about some of the integrations here. Just some really easy data aggregation, different steps, and then reporting out. All right, so this is a fully functioning workflow or solution here that's leveraging a UiPath integration. And we'll talk a little bit more about what all that really means. So just to demonstrate the interface here and how to start building your first workflows, again, I could come in, take a look at my data. I can ingest data again from a lot of different places. There's 80 plus connectors that we'll showcase, but we also have dedicated connectors to most common sources. So leveraging the ODBC, or perhaps Quick Connect, or even just a generic, right? So if you need to create your own connections or what have you, you have the ability to do so there as well. A wide variety of flat files, including shape files, Tableau, your basic flat files, all of those make your life a lot easier. And again, you can integrate these into a workflow at any given process. And the drag and drop interface allows me to really quickly just bring in tools together, start to blend my data, go through any preparation stages that I might need to do as well and really quickly ideate and build an automation. Now what's happening here inside of these workflows is again, only thing that's being saved is the configuration of these individual tools. And once I click run, that's essentially taking the data from the source that I provided, running it through that automation and it's done. So you don't have to go through and rebuild or tweak unless you absolutely have to. Now there's ways to make this more dynamic as well with analytic app functionality, which is what this workflow is doing. So you'll see here these black and white tools that have been leveraged inside of this workflow as well. So if I were to run this particular workflow as an analytic app, I provide end users with the ability to interface with my workflow and provide their criteria. So it eliminates a lot of that rework, right? So how many times have you had to do something ad hoc and then have to pivot it again or rerun it just to make sure that you have the right context for the end user. Here's some capabilities that are built in that make that really seamless when you're thinking about it from end to end. Now, building out this workflow is great, right? But how do we scale? How do we automate the end to end process? And that's really where we have Alteryx Server come into play. So this is the web app interface for Alteryx Server. Again, it's just software, it's not hardware, but effectively what it gives you is a gallery for all users within the organization and credentials and permissions are all respected here as well. So you're always getting keys to the city, but effectively I'm at my landing page for my organization. I have different categorical buckets of use cases that live here. And perhaps this is for specific users to share their work, provide access to all of the great things that they're doing, um, whether it's the most basic of workflow or perhaps something more custom, like a specific tool that you've created for your end users to use. I have the ability here to have user groups as well inside of collections. So only permissioned users can have access to various folders. 
And you'll see here that I also have a, a UI path user group that I've created for myself. And I've housed a workflow here. So that workflow that we were just looking at in designer has been published up into our gallery. And now from here as an end user, let's say I don't have access to Altrix designer, but I need to leverage work that's been done by an analyst. I could come in, take a look at this particular workflow, run it directly from the source here within gallery. I could schedule that workflow to run. So effectively capitalizing on that end-to-end -end automation, whatever needs to happen here. I can also assign which users need to have access to this. So when we're thinking about it from that perspective, I could run and execute very quickly and I get my results depending on how I've published them. So again, just as agnostic as we are on the ingest side, we are the same on the output side. So we could output to a PDF, PCXML, PowerPoint presentation, um, automate email notifications, et cetera, right? And a lot of times you'll see this at scale with perhaps driving to uh, update raw data on the back end for a Tableau dashboard to refresh, right? So giving yourselves a lot of capability here. And when I do upload this particular workflow into my server environment for my organization, I also have API access to this particular workflow. So I can call and execute that workflow from a variety of different ways. So here's a quick example of a web page that's hosted by Altrix. And we've included an analytic app as part of this interface, leveraging the gallery API. And again, with that analytic app interface allows me to provide my own criteria and execute a workflow. And for an end user, maybe within your organization, you don't even have to see the server web app interface, right? This could be housed anywhere. And you could see here that we've gotten some sample data giving us uh, just some rankings in terms of just what the projected income is gonna be by household in a, in a given radius. So lots of powerful things that you can do together when it comes to this particular workflow uh, or, or the automations that you're going through. Um, we'll showcase another example here that Mo will jump into a little bit deeper. But if I was to, um, let's say, do something a little bit more fun, right? If I wanted to take a look at a Spotify playlist designer, what this allows us to do is, again, have this gallery API available. And through UiPath, you have the ability to leverage the activity pack that's going to come in and execute this workflow from your UiPath automation. So if I were to come in and run this particular workflow, Again, I'm greeted with the web app style interface and I could come through and let's just say here, all right, I'm an eighties baby. So let's say we want to go for some eighties hits uh, and some nineties hip hop. I could select the number of tracks needed. I can select what type of music I want. And let's say I want to go acoustic. I could run and execute this workflow right from here. And again, as an end user, this is what I'm seeing, but what's actually happening in the background is a workflow like this is being executed. So you have full integration again with the Altrix platform to take your automations, put them into a place so that they can be fully leveraged and consumed across the organization and leveraging the connector for in this particular model, like we discussed earlier, I'm providing a parameter that's being passed through to the UiPath tool. That tool is again, calling and executing a UiPath uh, automation that's living in orchestrator. And then it's sending that data back so I can start to do some more advanced analytics against that data. So with that, I'll pitch it over to Mo so we can talk a little bit deeper about the integrations and then what that actually looks like in practice when you're building it out. All right, great, thanks, Samir. And uh, let me share my screen. I'm gonna pull up a couple of things just to uh, you know expand that a little bit of what we just, uh, what we just talked through. Um, Uh, and Amir, I think you might have to stop sharing uh, for me to be able to. There we go. Sorry. Um, and can everyone see my screen again? Yes. Perfect. All right. Um, so just one more, uh, one more component that I'm going to add to what we've already talked through, and then I'm going to pull up a couple live. Um, you know, so Amir was just talking about the connector within Alteryx Designer. We also have a, a, an activity pack within UiPath Studio. So what that looks like is, you know, it, it connects to Alteryx server that he just showed. So, you know, like all of our integrations, we just add a scope for the application within Studio. And then we've got a few actions like get app, get app jobs, 
get job and a really important one, run job and get job output that I'll show in just one sec. But basically that allows us, you know, within Studio to authenticate, to alter a server and then perform a lot of these core actions. So with all of that said, I'm gonna pull up a VM with a, with, with a server. This has orchestrator and Alteryx server on it. So I can show just, you know, a couple of those interactions, but um, I did wanna pull up, you know, just to expand a little bit on the API capabilities that Amir talked about. Uh, you know, that's really what I had to learn when I got started with some of this functionality. And, you know, Alteryx makes it really, really easy with open APIs and, um, you know, secure credentials via Alteryx server that I'm in right now. And, um, you know, just to interact via APIs. So if I go to, if I go to my profile, Within my profile, within Alteryx server under keys, I've got all these different API credentials. So for uh, for my private studio, I've got these, and for general API access, I've got these down here. So I'm gonna pull in the API access keys into just a simple Alteryx um, API tool. So I've got my interactive documentation from Alteryx here, and then I'm gonna go to um, the subscription tab and I'll put in my secret. And, or sorry, that was my key. So I'll put it in my um, API key and I'll grab my um, client secret. So just for a little bit of reference, because we're gonna show how this corresponds with what we're doing in studio. Um, you know, once I'm authenticated, if I hit get here, I'll see, uh, you know, anyone familiar with APIs, Postman, Swagger, et cetera, should be familiar with this type of interface. But basically, um, you know, once I hit try it out, I've authenticated successfully into my Alteryx server and I can start pulling some information out. So what I'm gonna do is the critical piece for everything that I'm about to demonstrate here is if I go to my workflows, I'm gonna to go to one of my existing Alteryx workflows on designer. And if you even just look at the URL, you know, before we go through the APIs, I've got a job ID here identified by, you can see job in the URL. And then if I go into the app itself, you'll see that I have an app. So I've got my combined spreadsheets app with an app ID. And if I take that app ID and I enter it as part of, you know, one of these API calls, so I can go to the post um, action here. Once I put my app ID in, I'm actually gonna kick off a job with this post action. So if I hit try it out, it started a job with corresponding job ID. You can see some of the transactional information like create date, status, et cetera. Uh, and then I can take that job ID. I'll just show you know, one or two more examples here before jumping into studio. And once I've got my job ID, I can do something important like uh, getting the output ID. So if I, or I'm sorry, uh, first I'll go to my job and get the job ID. So if I put my job ID here, I've got now my output ID and that was the last sort of you know, piece of the puzzle that I needed from an API perspective. So if I put the, the output ID in now, I can actually see some of those outputs. So if you look at it here, this is just the raw response body. So the raw data from what I executed within Alteryx server. Uh, as part of my workflow made by this API call. So, you know, I show all of that just to provide some context for what we've sort of simplified uh, within our studio activities. And within a simple UiPath Studio uh, workflow, all I'm doing here is I'm securely getting my credentials from Orchestrator. I've got an asset for Alteryx. And then I've got my Alteryx application scope. So all of that information that I just put in, so the client ID and the secret at design time, I can enter here. But then for the robot, uh, you know, for, for execution or runtime, I can actually store secure variables, test them in that way. If I test my connection, the connection is successful. And my UiPath uh, activities here, if I look for, uh, for Alteryx, these are all the ones that we just looked at briefly on the slide where I could run a job, I could um, you know, get app jobs, Get workflows is a way to get an output of all the possible workflows or apps that I can, uh, that, that I can reference. And all I've done here in this workflow is I'm starting out with that default app ID just for simplicity. I could always gather that from the workflows, but I'm just going to start with it. 
And within my workflow, that's sort of the critical piece. So once I've got my app ID, I can enter the priority. I can put in answers to questions. And I'll show a little bit about you know, what that answers in just a minute. But the key outputs here are just like when I went through the API route, you know, within that documentation, I'm doing the exact same thing here, where I'm getting a job output, I'm getting the job ID, and then I'm using corresponding um, activities within Studio to say, let's get the job output using the job ID. So what I've got here is you know, the job outputs. And again, just for reference, if I look at my API call here, all that I'm doing within Studio is referencing the outputs and the corresponding ID for it. So if I go back here, I'm gonna get that output. And in this case, it's a file. So I can tell UiPath Studio where to store the file and what the file name should be. And so if I run this, first of all, I got my job ID, just, you know, I put a message box. I can log that just to show what it is, but the outcome should be within this folder here, I should have a file called output.csv. So if I test out my folder here, I've got a file that matches the timestamp. So it just ran. And if we open it up, this is the output of my process. So I didn't go through what this process really means to, uh, too much because I, I did want to go back to Amir's example with the Spotify uh, playlist generator. And we had some fun setting up a couple of UiPath outcomes based on that. So if I go back to my desktop, I've got a playlist. So the output from Amir's workflow right here in Excel uh, format. Um, so I actually, I picked 80s as well, but Amir, I went for higher danceability. So if you look at it, 80s hits has its baseline scores here, but we put in a couple of input parameters, you know, like high danceability, which provided this. So with my new playlist, you know, I've got a great output. I've got all the names. You know, I've got a danceability score, what playlist it pertains to, and all of that. But if I want to go a step beyond that, you know, this is where Studio comes into play. And just, you know, a cool little example we came up with is if I go to Studio and if I start with that file, and of course we can connect, you know, the designer output to uh, the Studio input here, but I'm just starting with the file within my folder. I've got a couple of simple operations. So within Studio, I'm going to convert the Excel file to a uh, to a CSV. So I'm going to take the data table, convert to CSV to make it readable to a website that I'm going to use. And I'm going to go to just an open source website that imports CSV files and actually sets up a Spotify playlist for you. And that's going to be by UI automation within the browser. And once that's done, I've got a brand new Spotify account here. So I can actually pull up the desktop application at the end and it'll import a playlist for me. So unless there's any immediate questions here, why don't we go ahead and give it a run and we can see what that looks like. And I'll close my file, but again, just for reference, I've got my file here with my track list, my title and some of that uh, you know, corresponding information. And I'll go ahead and run the file here. So you'll see the spreadsheet come up for one sec, and then you'll see Studio log in, get into the, um, into the browser and authenticate Spotify. It is generating the playlist based on the CSV right now. We'll give it a name and we'll import it. And what you should see is it'll pop up in Spotify. So now we've got the output from Spotify convert or from from Alteryx converted to a Spotify playlist, and you know, really simple example. We had some fun with it, but if you take any type of data output and you want to do something with a legacy application with the website, we can absolutely incorporate those, and you can really put it anywhere you want. So, at that point, you know, besides Spotify, there's a lot of different destinations, a lot of different uh, you know outputs we can use for business processes. So I'll pause there. Uh, if there's any questions in the chat, we're, uh, we're glad to take some now, or we've got a little bit more content to go through as well. Yeah, so I have a couple of questions um, for you guys. Just a minute. Cool. The first one is from Jim Kaufman, and the question is, does Alteryx have trigger-based events, or are the schedules the only option? Do you foresee it, systems like UiPath as the main method of using triggers? Yeah, 
<clears throat> Absolutely. So when we were thinking about those trigger based events, there are some methodologies that you can leverage inside of the workflows and things of that nature to um, augment some of that. But again, that is one of the larger use cases we see in IT, right? So those trigger based events, RPA is essentially coming in and providing that overlay to be able to do some of those things. Great. And then the second question is from Pradeep Shukla. Does Alteryx have API generation as out of the box feature? With Alteryx server, you have access to the APIs. Alteryx designer desktop does not on its own. Okay. And then the last question is from Ann Shipman. Is Alteryx server a prerequisite for Alteryx and UiPath to integrate? So the integration, the way as it, as it stands right now, if you have Alteryx designer only, you can leverage the connection from the Alteryx side. So leveraging the connector to execute things inside of UiPath Orchestrator, that's with designer. If you're inside of UiPath and you want to leverage the activity pack, then server, Alteryx server is a requirement. Great. And then um, we had a question just come in from Shubman Gupta, how to run a Alteryx workflow via UiPath if we don't have Alteryx server available? Um, right now there is no integration that doesn't rely on the, the, the server piece to it. There are some command line executions, but again, that does require a specific license key that comes with server. So as it stands right now, if you were looking at executing from UiPath, you would need to have a server environment. Great, thanks. And that was the last question we had. All right, great. Um, so just to show a little bit about the connector, especially based on the question that we just had, um, I did want to pull Alteryx Designer back up and Within designer, um, I've got my connectors up here and UiPath is one of the connectors. So if I drag the UiPath connector in here, I've got an on-prem uh, orchestrator on this same server. So this is my orchestrator right here. And what I'll do is within the connector here, all I have to do is I can sign in a couple of different ways, but if I just wanna use basic authentication with username and password, I'll just put in, my um, orchestrator URL, my tenant, and my name and password. So as soon as I'm done there, as long as I remember the correct password and I didn't, sorry, give me one sec. As soon as I'm uh, authenticated, I've got my UiPath folder, or my uh, orchestrator folders here. So, you know, as you can see, Within Orchestrator, uh, I've got all my different folders here with their corresponding processes. So if I looked at my shared folder with my automations, this is what I have. So within Alteryx, that's exactly what I pull in. So I can specify within my shared folder, let's go ahead and use the Hello World process or something like that. And then I can add parameters, I can take the output from it, but this is how, as part of my Alteryx workflow, I can call UiPath and then you know, just to uh, just to reiterate again on the other side, you know, based on the other question that we just got, this is the activity that then ties to Alteryx server. So that's the two different directions from Studio with the activity pack and um, the connector within Alteryx designer. And Diana, did we have any additional questions? Otherwise, we got a couple of use cases to talk through, and we're also glad to walk through a couple more demos if we have time. Um, no questions at this time. Great. Um, so let me uh, go back to my slides here. And um, so we do have a couple of use cases. Amir, I don't know if you wanted to talk about the uh, the, the private the university one a little bit. Yeah, we could we could touch base on it for a bit. The um, workflow that we essentially just showcased for you all that was essentially a, a use case where there was legacy scores, right? Legacy systems that house test scores, and for a particular um, region, 
let's say the, the superintendent or someone along those lines was trying to access and get a predictive model built to understand how many of their students were actually um, within uh, 10% of being admitted into a higher universe, uh, education system. Um, there's also the scenarios where you're looking at ability to audit a lot of that information that lives within those legacy systems. So again, UiPath plays a huge role in that. There's no APIs to connect to, right? So the automations that access the data allowed for that ingestion into Alteryx and Alteryx doing all the advanced analytics to start getting the predictive nature of that score, making sure that different areas are being resourced appropriately. And we find similar use cases in healthcare as well. When we're thinking about readmission or we're thinking about um, the ability to provide service adequately in, in different areas, depending on the network. Um, so those are the types of areas in terms of where we see um, a lot of innovation in getting more accurate data, uh, getting more accurate predictions. So that way the businesses can actually execute against their strategic plans. Um, and, and is there one more in there as well, Mo? Another slide. Uh, I think that's the one that that's okay. we've, got, uh, we've got a couple of additional ones as well. Um, so let me just go through. We've got a couple over here. Um, so I can, yeah, just really quickly, um, you know, talk through. So we've also seen a lot of really good use cases around, uh, you know, customer analytic data and, you know, especially around customer satisfaction, employee engagement, uh, customer, re uh, customer retention. So, you know, there's a lot we can do in terms of that initial analysis within Alteryx to, you know, start identifying, uh, you know, risk of attrition analysis, things like that. And then the UiPath robot can then, you know, access a CRM system, um, you know, pull profile data from either the employees or customers based on what type of use case it is. And then that enriched data, that updated data can then be sent back to Alteryx. Uh, and then UiPath can start doing things like, um, you know, signing people up for, you know, whether it's a retention program or training courses, anything like that. And then we can integrate with uh, tools like Marketo and Slack for, um, you know, outbound, um, you know, marketing and especially inbound or uh, internal messaging and things like that. So, you know, really from a from an integration perspective, we can integrate with Slack, with Teams, with tools like that to communicate information out in addition to email and from a enterprise application perspective, we could substitute in Salesforce for a lot of other ERVs and uh, CRMs. But again, that critical piece is we need that analysis. We need those outputs from Alteryx. And then we can do a lot of those different administrative things following that, if that makes sense. And Diana, I don't know if uh, I think this is a good time just for a for the for the second quiz, just for a few minutes, and then we've got some wrap up slides as well. Um, we could walk through another demo as well. Sure, let's uh, do the quiz. So I'm going to put in the chat box the Menti code again, so everybody can see that. So the next question is, UiPath can be used with Alteryx to ingest data from challenging sources like documents, execute based on Alteryx outputs, or both A and B. Oh, a lot of people got that right. Nice job. Let's see who's in top now. Okay, Matt, you're still holding the lead. So we have one more question. We have some close competition here. In the Spotify demo example, what methods were used? API integration and Alteryx and UI automation and UiPath, only API integration or magic.
Time's up. Oh, great job, guys. Ooh, everybody got that right. Yeah. Great job. Well, let's see if Matt got it. I think he did. Oh, congratulations, that. Matt. So if you could put your email address in the chat window to me, um, I'll make sure you get your award. Thank you so much. <laughs> So do you want to do another demo or? Uh, sure, we've got a couple of resources that we wanted to walk through. And yeah, I'm glad to pull up uh, another quick demo. But if anybody else has any questions, um, you know, please feel free to shoot them into the chat. Um, let me reshare my screen and. So Amir, if uh, you want to walk through the um, your UiPath information on the Alteric side, I can do the reverse as well right after. Yeah, fantastic. So for anyone that's interested in learning more, um, going to uh, alteryx.com slash UiPath, uh, it's going to take you to a landing page for our Inspire um, conference that's coming up. Uh, it's actually in about two to two and a half weeks. So if you're interested in learning more around just the various integrations, what Altra is capable of, definitely and highly recommend either attending in person or even uh, the virtual sessions that we will have. Um, so take a look at that. Um, and we have tons of information out there around the Altrix and UiPath integration as well. A couple of videos on YouTube to help highlight what we just showed you today if you're just needing a refresher. Um, and then there's tons of white papers around the APA RPA process and different use cases that you can get leverage, uh, leverage for your you know, uh, ideation processes as well. So if you're thinking about just exploring and, and seeing what's out there, definitely go and check it out. We have a, a couple of pre-recorded webinars as well um, for your information and um, a couple of different uh, ways that you can start to get uh, active with it. So if you do have Alteryx Designer or if you don't, right, you can always download our trial. The connectors are all free. You can find those on our community page as well. And that's just community.alteryx.com. Um, go through that tons of, uh, again, a learning material on the Academy that's listed there. So you have a, a, a plethora of resources and then you can always reach out to your internal contacts at UiPath as well. And they can certainly point you in the right direction. Great. And then we have another question from Ann Shipman with UiPath orchestrator and Alteric server. Are we fully covered from a licensing perspective to allow the two to integrate? or is there additional licensing required? So you'll have to check internally, uh, depending on the, the organization you're with. Um, but again, the, they're two separate products. The integration here is really as a technology alliance between the two of us. Uh, we go to market together a lot in a lot of scenarios where, where we apply. Um, and you'll find that yeah, there is some common threads, right? There may be one particular organization that's leveraging UiPath versus another organization that's using Alteryx. So you may have some kind of internal combination of the two already. Um, so definitely check with your internal resources there. But again, they are separate products that would require separate licensing. Great, thank you. Mm uh great so let me um let me jump right back into designer just real quick i did want to call out one more thing from a demo perspective where um you know when, when i got started with designer very very helpful resource immediately available was um alteryx does provide a lot of different sample workflows so there's a lot of different examples here within designer on um you know whether it's functional activities like cleaning preparing data diagnosing things like that or kind of line of business tied ones like there's you know some really good banking and finance ones i used a couple with um with, within public sector for uh generating a crime report as an example things like that but if we start with any of these um starter kits i'll have my uh my workflow here within designer with, with an alteryx designer and you know you can see all the different actions like ingest of the data some of the initial preparation uh the ets models the actual modeling here and the output at the end and i've got you know a couple of corresponding workflows 
that tie to uh, you know a process like this um, within my UiPath folder. So um, you know, quick example here with that type of workflow. Just to reiterate, you know, some of the things that we've talked through today within my Studio workflow. As soon as it comes up again, all I'm going to do is I've got my alter scope and then I've got a couple of those core uh, activities to pull information and kick one off. So it looks like we actually deleted all of the, or a lot of this workflow. So um, I'll skip that one for now. But uh, Diana, did we have any more questions in the chat? I saw a couple of uh, additional chats come in. Yeah, I think um, Amir uh, answered it, but the Noth asked, said that he was new to Alteryx. Is it Unix or window-based server? Yeah, it's a great question. I've also included a link directly to our help documentation as well. It's really robust. So if you'd like to explore that, um, help yourself. The menu on the left-hand side should help guide you to any sections that you're looking for. But on its core, Alteryx, again, is a, a Windows-based platform. So essentially Windows for now. Um, we do have some cloud offerings that are available as well. Um, those integrations that we highlighted today aren't up to parity yet, right? Our cloud product is still fairly new, but you can start to explore and understand what our cloud capabilities are um, on our website as well. Um, and then there's going to be specific sessions at Inspire. So if you'd like to sign up for some of those virtually, certainly recommend doing that as well. Great, thank you so much. So did you have anything else to cover, Mo? Uh, sorry, I was talking on mute. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I think that's pretty much what we had to show today. I did also want to just you know really quickly pull up our documentation for the Alteryx Activity Pack. Um, we'll, we'll send out a couple of helpful resources on our side to go along with the Alteryx one that we just covered. But I think the, uh, the number one resource to go to for, uh, for our activities is the documentation here where it'll walk through some of the prerequisites, the technical ref uh, references, and you know, once you've set up, actually going through those activities and getting some more detail on all those individual activities we just looked at very briefly. So you know, the scope, getting workflows, running a job, getting job data, getting job outputs, et cetera. Um, you, know, uh, you know, just uh, you know, based on a little bit of what we showed there. Um, so Diana, I'll stop sharing if uh, you want to pull up the um, your, your slides. Sure. OK, can you see those? Uh, yep. OK, so I just wanted to let everybody know that we have a, a few programs that were are happening uh, right now, and um, we're really excited about them. The first one is a session where um, it's called Reboot Your Skills. It's a kickstart journey um, for automation. You need to register by May 4th, and it lasts for 10 days. Um, so this is a great way to you know, learn about RPA and get an introduction uh, to the product. Um, and again, it's coming up soon. They just run this program once a year. So it, I will put something in chat um, on how you can get information about this. And then the second program we have is right now we're running a survey. Um, and this is really important for um, the community, for RPA community. Um, it's, it's thorough, it's, it talks about, you know, um, you know what people's journeys are um, with RPA, um, if they're a developer, if they're a student. So we really encourage you to go and sign up for this survey. It only takes about 15 minutes to fill out um, and we'd really appreciate your feedback and input. Um, and then lastly, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the other sessions that are coming up. We have a session that we're running on May 5th um, to drive actionable insights and real-time business events by seamlessly combining UiPath automation with Click, dashboard and workflows. And then on the 12th, um, the following week, we have accelerated RPA deployment with UiPath and CyberArk. And we do these sessions with the Technology Alliance um, partners that we have within the corporation um, and partners at these integration um, service companies. So um, would really appreciate your attending these future events. 
Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, we have um, more than 1.5 professionals and citizen developers that are involved in our community. So if you have any questions about, you know, what we do in the community um, and want to join it, we're happy to have you. We have a variety of things that you can get involved with. Um, again, we have Rohit on the call, Chris, myself. So if you have any interest, please let us know in the chat. Um, and the URL for the community is, is um, community.uipath.com. So um, that's what I had. And um, I just really want to thank you, Amir and Mo, for your presentation today. It was really, really good. Uh, all, all links are in the chat. So guys, please check all the links that we placed in the chat. We will leave the call open for one more minute so you can pick up the links to these programs and also to the Tech Integration Series, Americas and EMEA events, the two more events we have following in the series. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. And Amir, thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you, Amir. thanks, everyone. Thank you, Mo. Thank you.